Turn to your Bibles in the book of Acts chapter number 2. We are reading verse 41, 42, and 46. You are going to have to add for me your time because we have taken a little bit of time. Uh, so we will not be able to finish up in the usual time of 11.30. Uh, don't start looking at your watch on me when I've, that time has come. Acts chapter 2, we are reading verse 41, 42, and then 46. The Bible says, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in, in uh, the breaking of bread and in prayers. 46. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. I don't know whether my mic is sounding well. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We are grateful for your word. We pray that you will minister to us this um, morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm speaking to us on what I've entitled, Do You Belong? Do You Belong? Now, I want you to imagine and then take that imagination and put it at the back of your mind so that as I uh, share, you will continue to put that imagination at the back of your mind. I want you to imagine this beautiful, perfect, no, maybe not perfect, this beautiful, uh, uh, loving, caring family. With the father of that family, a, a loving family, I mean a loving father, caring father, a father who provides, a father who is available, hallelujah. Because the problem that we are having in our homes today is men are being accused of not being available. But I want you to imagine a father who is not only caring, not only loving, but is also available. And uh, a father who meets the needs of his family without any fail. I want you to imagine that family where the children are loving each other. The children have each other's back. They, they support one another. They, 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 they love one another. They uh, cheer one another up. I want you to have that family at the back of your mind. Even as we share this portion um, of scripture or this sermon today. Then as you have that at the back of your mind, I want you to... Answer quietly, what is your understanding of a church? What is a church to you? Don't answer loudly, just have the answer internally. What is a church to you? Because to many of us, a church is, um, you know, um, something that... Uh, uh, we know either from our background or that is what our understanding is. Uh, and there are people who, you know, have different understanding of what a church is. And I want to share with us what a church is today. Let me begin with what a church is not. Number one, the church is not a building. I know in a light way, we refer to this place as a church. So we say, I am going to church. And when you say you are going to church, you are coming to this building. So in other words, there are times that we refer to this building as the church. But this is not the church. This is not a church. This is a church building. Hallelujah. Now, a church can meet in a building, but the building is not the church. Number two, the church is not an institution. But I know those who know English well always refer to the church as an institution, the institution of the church. Institution is... Establish law or practice. And I know that we practice 
religion or church or whatever. And so that is why sometimes we refer to the church as an institution, but the church is not an institution. So what is a church? What is the church? Now I want you to note this down. If you're writing somewhere, you can write this. It will help you um, in future when you are answering that question to somebody loudly. Right now you have answered it internally. Write down, a church is not a place I go to. It is not an event I attend. It is a spiritual family that I belong to. A church is not a place I go to. It is not an event I attend. It is a spiritual family I belong to. Now when you coming to church to attend an event. That is why you get disappointed that the choir did not lead us well today. Because you came for an event. When you go for an event, you, you want to, you want to uh, um, sample everything in the event from the welcoming. They did not welcome me properly. That event was not properly organized. The protocol team is not properly organized. They don't smile because you are coming to attend an event. But a church is not an event. When the choir have sung, if they are blessed to you, feel yes, they really performed today. To you, it is a performance. The pastor, the pastor, the preacher performed well. He delivered well because you've come to sample what is going on in an event. The church is not an event. It's a family I belong to. Praise the name of the Lord. So the question is, do you belong? And I said, imagine this family that is, has a loving father, a caring father, a father that is present, a father that can meet all your need, a father that, you know, you can count on any time. When we talk about the church, the body of Christ, the church that God is building, the church that the gates of hell shall not prevail, we are talking about a spiritual family with a father called God, a father who is caring, a father who is loving, a father who is ever present, a father who knows what you go through through even before you make mention of them a father who is always available for you that is what a church is praise the name of the lord hallelujah now you may say then why do we struggle why do we go through so many things if the church you know is god's family and god is the father and he's a loving father and just caring father no there's something god is taking his family through it's an adventure he's taking you through last sunday i said if you are you know going through an adventure uh, you can either behave in two ways. You can complain and mama and grumble or you can be writing a journal and taking selfies and, and journaling down and saying, we reached a point, it was too dark. We reached a point, things were bad. I could not even breathe. I was almost, it's a journal you were writing so that at the end of the day, when now you are seated after victory, after arrival, you can go through your journal. Praise the name of the Lord. A church is a spiritual family that you belong to. And I'm here to tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, you are a part of the first family. I thought I was hearing a man. I'm only hearing it from my wife. Ladies and gentlemen, you are part of the first family. Now you know the privileges that go with the first family. The first family will never lack. The first family will not find themselves stranded. The first family will not go hungry. The first family is first. You are part of the first family. Hallelujah. God is our father. And he loves us. And he cares about us. Now, the scripture that we have read in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, 42, and 46 kind of defines to us in scriptural terms 
what this spiritual family is. It says, we've, we've looked there, there is a word baptized, there is um, added, um, there is uh, fellowship, there is uh, doct apostles' doctrine. So, in summary, you can say a church is a group of baptized believers who are joined together in a commitment to help each other fulfill God's purposes for their lives. Hallelujah. A group of baptized believers, and we are baptizing others today. If you have not been baptized, we, we don't know what you are still waiting for. Uh, baptized believers who are joined together in a commitment to help each other fulfill God's purposes for their lives. There's also another portion of scripture that scripturally defines a church, and that is in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 22 and 23. It says, and God placed all things under his feet and gave him to be head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hallelujah. So to summarize that, you can say the church is a body of believers who have been called out from the world by God to live as his people under the authority of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. The ultimate um, person that we report to, that we are... Um, under is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And the Bible says all things have been put under his feet for the sake of the church. For the sake of this spiritual family. All things have been put under his feet. Hallelujah. So quickly let me give to us the importance of the church. If you never knew you are not just a VIP or a VVIP. You are above that. Hallelujah. As a part of God's family, you cannot fit into the VIP or the VVIP if there is any other. That is why you fit. I don't know whether there's VVVVVIP. You are very important because the church is important. Praise the name of the Lord. Why is the church important? Number one, because the church is God's family. Now tell me, what other thing will be more important than God's family? Which other family will be more important than the family of God? Which other grouping on the face of the earth will be more important than God's family? Is it the G7? G7 can never compare with you. When God looks at the world, he sees you more important than the G7. Praise the name of the Lord. Members of the United Nations don't fit, don't even reach quarter to where you are. That is why the church is important. That is why you are important. That is why you need to belong to the church. Please take down, you can read it later, First Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 15. Number two reason why the church is important, it is the only reason God created the universe. God created this universe for his family. The rivers, the mountains, the trees, the animals, the ocean. Everything was created for the family of God to enjoy. The Bible says he who gives you all things to enjoy. Hallelujah. God created everything that you see for his family. He wanted his family to be in this peaceful, beautiful place. Hallelujah. So he created everything. Then he created man. Blessed them to enjoy. Of course, sin came and tampered with everything. But I want you to know today, the earth was not created for the sake of being there. The moon and the sun were not put there for the sake of being there. They were put there for you. The ocean is there for you. The rivers are there for you. The trees are there for you. Everything was created for the family of God. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse number four and five. I'm trying to save on time so you can uh, 
just take note of this uh, down. He says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. I wish we could get it from the Living Bible uh, version. But uh, now, that is the reason why God created everything. He created it for his family. Number three reason, God is using the church for his eternal purposes. The church is there to fulfill the eternal purposes of God. God is a purpose-driven God. He doesn't that do things for the sake of doing things. When God creates you, he has a purpose. When he places you in a school, he has a purpose. When he places you in a marriage, he has a purpose. When he gives you a position, he has a purpose. He is a purpose-driven God. And the purposes of God are fulfilled by the church. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 10. Let's read Ephesians 3.10 from the message version. It says, through Christians like yourselves <laughs> gathered in churches, this extraordinary plan of God or the extraordinary purposes of God is becoming known and talked about even among the angels. Hallelujah. That is why you are so important. That is why you should never look down on yourself. That is why you should never allow anybody to intimidate you. You are important. The church is important. Number four reason why the church is important is that Jesus died for the church. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 27 Jesus died for the church now if you want to know how important how valuable something is you look at the price that somebody is willing to pay for that thing then it shows how that thing is important to that person if a person is willing to lay down their lives for something it means that something is valuable to them it is important to them and so the church which is you you are so important to God that he he died for you. He laid down his life for you. Hallelujah. Number five reason why the church is important. It is the only thing on earth that is going to last forever. Praise the name of the Lord. The only thing that is going to last forever. After this earth, there's going to be a new one. Hallelujah. And you and me, we are going to be ruling. Praise the name of the Lord. Watch a governorship, what on a pigania, they are running all over the place, spending too much money, wanting to kill each other, calling each other names. We are going to be real governors, real, proper, with full power. Praise the name of the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 17. And also Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 21. You can note them down, you will read them, it shows you. The church will last forever. Number six is the only group that Jesus said will succeed no matter what. Whether hell breaks loose, whether the devil jumps up and down, this group called the church will succeed no matter what. Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18 Jesus is building his church, which is you and me, and the gates of hell. Nothing. Gates of hell means powers. Principalities of hell will not stop you and me. Hallelujah. It is the group that will succeed no matter what. It is the group whose victory have already been sealed. Hallelujah. Number seven. It is the only group big enough to solve global problems. G7 will meet. They run out of wisdom. Right now, they don't even know how to handle Russia. They don't know. Hey. Hey. The guy has gone into Ukraine, he's killing and destroying everything. And the guys who are supposed to be stopping him are still scratching their heads. What do we do? Hallelujah. 
But the church has the power to finally solve global problems. You have spiritual weapons. You have physical ones. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We have the numbers. It is believed that currently, those who are followers of Christ, including those who say, Mimi si wakule, wakule mimi ni wahapa. Those ones, we are 2.3 billion. In other words, the, the, the Christians, the church, is bigger than China. China is 1.87, 8, 1.8 billion. India is 1.3 billion. The church is 2.3 billion. Those who call themselves Christians, those who are following Christ. Now, if you want to solve global problems, you cannot ignore a group as large as that. Praise the name of the Lord. They will have economic power. The only problem is that the family is not functioning the way it's supposed to function. If this family, like that's why I told you, have that picture at the back of your mind. The, the picture of uh, uh, this good family loving, living together, wanting everything good for the other, helping each other. If Christians were to come together, 2.3 billion, love one another, support one another, behave like the early church, Selling whatever we don't need to support those who have nothing. I can assure you, this world will look up to the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Number eight, why the church is important. It is the greatest privilege in life to have or to belong to. Belonging to a church is the greatest privilege you can ever have. I know there are people who, can, who, who, who say, I wish I can step into the state house or white house or wherever it is, whichever color of house it is. But the greatest privilege is to be a part of God's family. Hallelujah. Because you become part of the first family. You become part of a group. That wins no matter what. Quickly, benefits of being in a church. I'm doing this for a reason so that we can get into what we need to do with our. We have a booklet we're going to give you today. Number one, benefits. A church family helps you to focus on God. A church family helps you to focus on God. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33, we are told to seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and the other things we run around to get shall be added. Now, where you get focused on, on seeking first the kingdom, hallelujah, and its righteousness is supposed to be in your spiritual family. That spiritual family is supposed to help you focus on seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The church family is there to help you focus on God, your father. Hallelujah. The way that if you have a loving father, the, the, the mother is focused on the father. Children are focused on the father. As a church family, we're supposed to focus on the father. The church family helps us to focus on the father. Number two, the church family helps us to face life's problems. That is why I told you, put at the back of your mind that family, okay? We are not talking about this one where you have a reason why you want to leave. Somebody talked and said things, uh, 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 you are hurt because the pastor did not pick your call. And Leave alone those ones. I'm talking about now the church as Jesus intended it to be. Supposed to help you face your life's problems and challenges. Do you remember that in the early church, the Bible says they sold everything and shared among themselves to those who had need. That is where the father intended. That is how the father intended this family to be. Amen. Helps you with your challenges and needs. Through prayer, counsel, wisdom, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, help, you know, all that is there for you in the church. And um, I'm reminded of this song. 
And maybe somebody will help us to sing it at the end. I need you. You need me. We are all a part of God's family. Those who have been in a flow, you can remember that song, okay? You are part of God's family. Ah, I need you to survive. Do you remember that song? I think we have sung it here. I need you to survive. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. The church family helps you to fortify your faith. This is where you fortify your faith. You receive a word. You receive challenges. You, receive, you see people. You interact with people. Some of them step on your toes and everything. All that is what helps you to fortify your faith. Four, church family helps you to find your place to make a difference or to serve in. Amen. Church family is going to help you pass your final exam. The final exam has two questions. Number one, what did you do with Jesus? You received him as Lord and Savior. You are helped by the church to know this Jesus to understand this Jesus, to love this Jesus, to serve this Jesus. The church family helps you to do that. Number two question, that is in the final exam, is what did you do? God is going to be the one asking this question. What did you do with what I gave you? What I put in you? Your giftings and your talents. Then you say, I used it to serve you, to serve the people. Uh, um, uh, my fellow brothers and sisters. The first question determines your destiny. The second question determines your rewards. For you to pass those two, I mean, those two questions, the final exam, you need the church. You need your church family. Because your church family will help you to develop your stewardship. So that you can be able to use the things that God has given to you. Now, the big question. How do I belong? How do I belong to a church? Number two. Oh, not number two. Number one. First, you must join the church. By becoming a member of the body of Christ. You belong. You get to belong by joining the church. Becoming a member of the church. How do you do that? By being born again. Hallelujah. When you are born physically, you become a member of the human race. You become a part of the human race. When you get born again, you become a member of God's family. You become a part of God's family. Now the first one you have no choice, but the second one you have a choice. You make your choice. You receive Jesus. You accept him. You accept to belong, to become a member. That is why you must answer the question, do you belong? Either yes or no. Because the choice you make. So that's the first step. You get born again into God's family. You are first born physically into the human race or the human family. Then now you get born again into God's family. You cannot be in God's family without being born again. The way to being a part of God's family is being born again into the family of God. Right now, if you are not born again, you are born in the human race. You are a part of the family of humans. Then you become a part of the family of God when you are born again. Hallelujah. Secondly, how do, I, how do I belong? You belong by fulfilling the purposes or the purpose uh, of as part of the family member. You don't just become a family member and you sit there and do nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. 
A family member is concerned about the family affairs, contributes to the family affairs, defends the affairs of the family. Praise the name of the Lord. So for you to belong is being born again and then fulfilling part of the family's purpose. Hallelujah. The family has a purpose. The family has a purpose to make Christ known, to know Christ and to make him known. The family has a purpose to demonstrate the family of God, the love of God, the faithfulness of God, the holiness of God. So as a part of a family member, hallelujah, you are supposed to be fulfilling part of the purpose of the family. The family is supposed to be loving. This is God's family. It's supposed to be loving. Are you loving? Loving. Because if you are not, then you are letting the family down. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot be a member of God's family and you don't even love your brother. You don't love your sister. You only love yourself. You know, you don't care what other people are going through. The family of God loves. The family of God cares. The family of God supports. The family of God stands with one another. For you to belong to the family, you must do those things. Show love. Show concern. Care. Support to one another. Praise the name of the Lord. That is how you belong. You follow the principles of God. Now, in scripture, the church is likened to several things. It is likened to a flock and um, God as our shepherd. The family is also likened to a bride. I mean the church. The church. The church is likened to a bride. The church is also likened to a, a branches of a tree. The church is also likened to a temple, a building. The church is also likened to a human body. So when scripture wants to define or to make us have the picture of the church, it will use branches of a tree, flock, bride, building, temple, so that you get to know, understand the human body. You get to understand what the church is. So I want to take two of them to help us get uh, some deeper understanding. Let's look at the building and the human body. Now the church is likened to a building. First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 5. It's likened to a, a, a building. Now I want to ask you this. Buildings from those of us who are from um, uh, several parts of Africa, we use bricks and mortar to build. Now if somebody takes bricks and goes and uh, 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 drops them in their building site and leaves them there, is that a building? It's a pile of blocks. And you know what happens if you put a pile of blocks in your building site and then you go your way and you don't do anything, you don't visit, you don't, you know, continue with what you had in mind. After a while, those blocks will begin to decrease. Because there are people who find their way and they say, I need 10 of this. Nobody is here. They pick them and they go. And that is what happens when you remain a brick. You remain a brick and you are piled somewhere. The devil has some knees with bricks. He comes and picks three of you and four of you and five of you. He goes to do whatever he wants to do. You must allow yourself as a brick now to be committed to the building. Praise the name of the Lord. How do you commit bricks to become a building? You commit them through cement and sand. You cement the bricks to one another. Then now you're building a building. Hallelujah. Building is not there and say, this house needs 5,000 blocks. And then you drop 5,000 blocks and you say, okay, there we have the house. No, the 5,000 blocks must now be put on top of each other, on the side of each other, until they make up the walls. Praise the name of the Lord. Now you find that those bricks are committed to each other through the cement. And if bricks could talk, 
They will tell you their freedom has been curtailed. They don't do whatever they want. Once a brick has been committed to another brick on top, below, on the sides, it, is, it, it cannot just decide, I want to move, I, I, you, you guys stay, I'm going. No. When it does that, it spoils everything. It spoils the building. So the brick does not do whatever it wants. The bricks is now committed to a building. Hallelujah. Now there are so many church members in quotes or church attendees that are a pile of blocks. You come and you have been dropped in Praise Chapel Sanctuary. Pop! And you stay there as a block. Time has come that now you begin to join with me as another block. Join with that sister as another block. Join with the other brother as a block. So that we can now become the building of God. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot be a member of the church and you want to do whatever you want. Whichever way you want it. Then you are not committed. Anybody that is committed, don't do whatever they want, whichever way they want. They go by the common purpose of whatever it is that they are in. Hallelujah. You cannot be in this family and you want to do whatever you want, whichever way you want it. If you want your freedom to do what you want, then you can't be a member of a church. A member of a church is committed to the ideals of that family. A member of the church advances the interest of that family. So if you're a member of a church family like Praise Chapel, you must be committed to the ideals of Praise Chapel. You must advance the interests of Praise Chapel. Then you can say, I'm a member of that church. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the church is also likened to a human body. Romans chapter 12, verse number 4 and 5. We are told that, you know, we are different parts, but we are one body. So you have the head, you have the hands, you have, uh, um, you know, the ears, you have the eyes, you have the toes, you have all these internal organs. With, they form the body. Hallelujah. But again, just like the blocks, for you to be a body, you cannot have the hand doing their own things, going wherever they want. Can you imagine finding a hand wanting to get into the same matatu you are getting into? You won't get into that matatu. The hand is there. You are seeing a hand, hoping, hoping, and saying, hey, matatu wapi. You can't go there. Utasema Mombasa itatuonyesha maajabu. Mimi yo matatu singi. Hello, somebody. If you found the head hoping around Makupa, saying, hey, ata si tukondani ndani ndani, utazema yondani kaini pekenu. Me, I'm not going there. Amen. It's a body hoping around. And body, the head only becomes acceptable when it is joined to the rest of the body. But if the head is not joined to the body, you cannot accept that head. You cannot even want to be near it. You can't even deal with it. Now, that becomes a ghost. And don't make me say what I want to say. It means there are people who are church attendees that are ghosts. Because they want to be by themselves. They are the hand of Praise Chapel, but they are not with the Praise Chapel body. They are hoping everywhere in Likoni, Kongoea, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people are running away from you because they can't imagine a hand talking and doing things. Join the body. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You only become a body after joining the body. The Bible is clear. The eye cannot say, I don't need you. I don't need the head. I don't need the hand. I don't need whatever. No. The church, I mean, the, the eye needs the body. The hands need the body. The feet need the body. Praise the name of the Lord. And we must take care of one another. Some of us might be just nails of the, of the body. But we need the nails. If, if somebody was to pluck your nail today, I can tell you. You won't sleep. Some of us can be the teeth. Have you ever had a toothache? Toothache. 
It's a teeth. You don't see it. I'm just one molar somewhere in the body. I am important. And when I am in pain, when I'm troubled, you pain as well. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't say, ah, your teeth is just one small thing. Let it just, let it not disturb me. It will disturb you. That is why you go for it to be plucked because you can't sleep. The pain is too much. Now, if you're a member of a body, it does not matter. You are not insignificant because the nail is as important as the eye. The, 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 um, you know, the, the, tooth, the teeth are important just like the other parts of the body. That's why I need you. That's why you need me. Amen. Now, there's something common with those two uh, uh, analogies that have been given about the church. About the piles of bricks that make a building and uh, members of the body that make a body. One thing that is, is important, that is common to both, that is needed in both for them to be the building of the body is commitment. The piles of bricks must commit to make a building. The members of the body, the eyes, the ears, the teeth, the legs, the hands, must commit to make the body. Commitment in this, in this church family is crucial. Praise the name of the Lord. What uh, uh, um, makes a difference in, in anything... Whether it is a body or building or family or a marriage or a business, is commitment. If there is commitment, then you know that you can actually go far. Praise the name of the Lord. You can accomplish what you need to accomplish. The same way, a block that has been placed on top uh, a block that has another block on top of it and another block on its side has another block below. They stick there and they are committed and they stay and they make the building look beautiful. They don't say, I am tired of somebody sitting on my head, another brick sitting on my head. I want my freedom. The same way those bricks are making a good, beautiful building is the same way you as a member of a church family, you need to be there. Somebody is sitting on your head, others are on your side, others are below you, and you are not feeling the comfort and the freedom that you want, but you are the one that is supposed to now. Your commitment to, to being with one another, connected with one another on top, below, on sides, is what makes that church family beautiful. So don't run away. Small things happen and you're off. No. People don't just quit families like that. When I see fewer. We don't want heads running around here. Or hands running around everywhere. We don't want a church that is scary to the rest of the world. The church must be attractive. Hallelujah. And for us to be attractive, for us to be a beautiful building that we can watch and see and like, we must commit to one another to remain together, to make the building. For us to be a beautiful body, we must remain together, committed together. The nails are committed, the eyes are committed, the hands are committed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, when it comes to the local church, of course, we cannot be uh, doing the same things everywhere. When you look at the body, this is my right hand. This right hand can choose to pick this handkerchief without this other hand having to do the same. We are not robots. Uh, you know how robots operate? Robots go like that. It's like they have to they copy uh, the limbs. Uh, so if this hand is picking this, the other one must also. This hand can pick this handkerchief without my left hand doing anything. My left hand can just decide to be here or can be raising um, whatever. And this one is doing something else. But they are still part of the same body. It doesn't mean because this hand is now 
picking stuff and the other one is not, then it means that hand now has ceased to be part of the body. It's still part of the body. That is the way the local church is. There's a local church that is the left, the right hand. The other one is the left hand. They are free to do other things the way they do them, but they are still part of the body. Praise Chapel is doing things with his left hand. Hallelujah. But we are still part of the body of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is how God intended this family to function. And when we function like that, we become powerful. We become stronger. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I am here to challenge you to commit. Commit to belong to the family of God. To the part of the family of God called Praise Chapel. Everybody wants commitment. Everywhere. We want commitment in marriage. We want commitment in business. We want commitment at the place of work. We want commit commitment from our children. The only place we think we can stay without commitment is church. So people want a committed spouse. They want committed children. They want committed parents. They want committed employees. Can you imagine you getting a job today? In Rua and Associates, you have been employed and you are beginning your letter. Now the first day you, you report, everybody is greeting you and receiving you and saying, welcome to our, our law firm. And then you tell them, thank you very much, but I want you to know I'm really not committed to this place. Will they keep you? I don't think so. Or can you imagine a wedding? People have come, we have sung, we have eaten pilau. You know, we have taken pictures. And then the honeymooners have gone to honeymoon. And the one spouse turns to the other and says, by the way, those words I say in church, you know, they were just words. I'm really not committed. I'm just trying this. Is that marriage going to work? I don't think so. Commitment is crucial. It's needed. That is why when you come to a church family, you don't come here and say, by the way, I'm just here. I'm, I'm just here. I'm, I'm really not committed here. You won't last. You will not last. If you are looking for performance, my friend, the day we don't perform, you'll be gone because you'll start complaining. Oh, nowadays the church is boring, the preaching is boring, it's dry, the choir don't know what they're singing, you know, they're out of tune, yeah, you are complaining and murmuring and grumbling. Why? Because you are looking for performance. And I told you in the beginning, a church is not an event you attend. So if you are attending an event, you will look for performance and you will not get performance and you will be disappointed and you shall leave. But if you are committed to a church family, you are here for the family. Praise the name of the Lord. You stick and you stay in. Amen. So for, you, for those of you who attend Praise Chapel regularly, you have been here for a while now. When somebody asks you, which is your church? You say, Praise Chapel. I'm talking to you. If you are here and somebody asks you, which is your church? And you tell them, I don't know. Right now, shut your ears. I'm not addressing you. You, you are now, you are free to think of what lunch is going to be. Okay? Those, those, that group, you can think of lunch. Anybody that considers Praise Chapel as your church family, when you are asked where or which is your church, you say Praise Chapel, please put everything down. Listen to me. Watch me now. I have a question for you. And I want you to answer this question to yourself. Do you belong to this church family? You consider this your church family. You come here regularly. 
If you're asked which is your church, you say praise chapel. My question to you today is do you belong here? If your answer is yes, that is the first step. How do you belong to a family? You are born there. You are born into it. The family of God, we are born into it. Now you must be born into this church. Praise the name of the Lord. You become a member. You join. I like people who come to praise chapel and after, you know, a few months, they feel God led them here. And after a few months, they are asking, how does somebody become a member? I like those kind of Christians. Praise the name of the Lord. They are already thinking commitment. They are already thinking family. They want to know, how can I really get in, 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 inside, inside Kabis? How do I get in? But you find somebody who has been in the church for years. They have never asked that question. And they always want to move. Something new has come. Where when the your Ushafungua WhatsApp group? By the way, Ule Prophet, have you gone? Did you attend day one? Did you, did you, did you see this? Hey! You get in by joining. Number two. You begin to fulfill the ideals and the interest of that family. Praise the name of the Lord.